Our next episode is It Happened One Nut, hence the incredibly humiliating get-ups. Oh, come on, Daria. Where's your usual dry-roasted sense of humor? If you make some dumbass remark about coming out of my shell, I'm walking. Hey, don't get all worked up. I'm in this thing, too. I guess that's true. What? Almond dis thing, too. Can someone get my agent on the phone? Oh boy, here they come. Here they come. Six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight. Very impressive. It must take a lot of concentration to do that. Sure does. Which reminds me, I was wondering if you could help me with something. Does it involve taking something out of my wallet? No. Nope. Then fire away. I've got an English paper due Monday, and well... You want me to look it over for you? That'll be great, as soon as I finish. When will that be? Probably after I start it. You have a paper due Monday, and you haven't started yet? 75, 76, 77. Okay, Freddie Adu, that's it. How long have you known about this paper? Two weeks. And you put it off till now? I want to find just the right topic. You can start looking right after school today, in your room. Let's go. But I don't want to do some laying the most interesting person I know kind of thing. Well, you better think of something. Let's go. This isn't the way home. Where are we going? I have to hurry over to the car wash. Aren't you forgetting something? Like the car? Car washes have the best cards, and I need to get one for your mother. Why? It's not her birthday. No, no, no. Today is our 19th wedding anniversary. And you haven't gotten her a card yet? I wanted to find just the right card. How long have you known about this anniversary? Mm. 364 days. And you put it off until now? One. Two. Okay, Catherine, you got a sandwich, fruit cup, and a snack. Do you want anything else? Yes, a candy. I said we'd talk about it later, sweetie. It is later. Can we get one? Why do you want a kitten? We already have a dog. Anna sleeps with Angie. I want an animal to sleep with me. Wait about 20 years when you're married. Huh? <laughs> Never mind. What about Shamu, too? He sleeps with you. He's a goldfish. He doesn't sleep. And I'm not allowed to take Shamu, too, to bed with me. Not after what happened with Shamu, one. Morning, Mom. Happy anniversary. Thank you. How did you know about that? Dad told me. He's real excited. Wait till you see what he got you. Is that the beautiful woman I've been married to for the past 19 years? How long is that in cat years? A hundred gazillion. Here you are, gorgeous. Thank you, handsome. Come on, you two. You're married. What's that aroma? Car wax. If I were a prince and you were a frog, I'd kiss you once on the cheek. But if that didn't get you off the log, I'd be gone by the end of the week. What a romantic. Everybody, guess what? Carmel's big sister has a horrible cold. If it turns into pneumonia, should we throw a party? She's too sick to go to the Fandy concert tomorrow night, and she's giving me her ticket. Can I go? Sure, I guess so. The only problem is Carmel's sister was going to drive. I guess I could take you. That's okay, Dad. We'll take the bus. You want to take a bus when I'm offering to drive? I'd drop you right in front. Yeah, I know. No offense, Dad, but it's just not cool to be seen with your parents, you know? I can be pretty cool. Daddy, saying you can be cool is so not cool. Oh, no? I'll bet Catherine thinks I'm cool, don't you, honey? Hmm. Can I have a kid? All right, everyone. Time to go. Let's move it out. You and I can talk about your paper on the way to school. Oh, what are you writing it on? The most interesting person I know. Excellent topic. I was born on the south side of Philadelphia. It was a snowy day and all the way to the... Hey, Arthur, what's the word? Today's my 19th wedding anniversary. Hey, 19 years. That's about how long I've been married, too. If you count my three marriages back to back to back, what you getting at? Well, you know, for number 19, it's supposed to be something bronze. Hey, I could talk to my cousin for you. He's a jeweler? No, he came in third in the 96 Olympics. Does your wife like Greco-Roman wrestling? <laughs> Hello? Oh, hey, baby. Really? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. No, it's okay. We can't go. We can't go. Soup? Yeah, I guess I can make you some soup. <sighs> She's coming down with something. I better cancel our dinner reservations. Could I have the number for Le Bourguignon? You were going to Le Bourguignon? I hear that's quite a place. Yeah, they say Le Bourguignon is French for bring lots of cash. <laughs> Hello? Yes. Wait, 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 don't cancel. 
I could go. Well, thanks, sir, but you're not my type, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I could take your reservation for my anniversary. Norma's always wanted to eat there. Well, sure, why not? Thanks, Simon. If there's anything I can do for you. You know how to make soup? What's all of this? Notes for your paper. It takes me up through my fraternity years. Dad, the whole paper can only be six pages. Type small. That little sweetheart, do I have a surprise for you? I have one for you, too. I bet mine's bigger. Oh, I don't know about that. Yo, RT, how's my favorite bro in law? Curtis. Yeah, I just bombed in the town to spend a few days of quality time with you and my sis. Mm. You got me. Your surprise is bigger. Arthur, that was the most incredible meal I've ever had. Nothing's too good for you, sweetie. But there's one more thing. Happy anniversary. Arthur. It's beautiful. It sure is, Artie. That reminds me, when I was in Africa, I was gonna write a diary while I climbed Kilimanjaro. I discovered a tribe who hadn't seen another human being since the Bronze Age. I was the first one. Wow, lucky them. So I got to thinking, I was on my way to see the Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama in Africa? He was vacationing. Anyhow, I said, to heck with that. I wanna do a documentary on this tribe. So I pulled out my camera and began shooting. And 16 days later, I had the most incredible documentary ever. When can we see it? I sent it to Sundance and it got lost in the mail. Haven't seen it since. It probably cost me a cool mill. Oh, well. That is tragic, isn't it, Arthur? Tragic? It's unbelievable. Will there be anything else, sir? I think we're all set. All set? Artie, it's your anniversary. Nothing's too good for my big sis. Bring us three of your finest desserts. Uh, a Curtis. It's okay, Artie. It's on me. Oh, no. What? Can't believe it. My wallet. That guy at the airport. Somebody picked your pocket? No, a man was collecting for charity by the baggage claim. I took out my wallet, slipped him a crisp hundy, and I must have put the wallet back in my carry-on. Oh, well. Yeah, you know I'm good for it, bro. Now, where was I? Oh, right. Kilimanjaro. It was a rougher climb than I expected. My food was gone. My water was gone. Your wallet was gone. And then came a sandstorm. I couldn't see a thing, so I just kept walking. But I didn't know I was out on the ledge. And before I knew what had happened, I walked off that ledge and started falling 9,000 feet to the rocks below. What did you do? I tried to make my backpack into a parachute. All I know is that just before I hit the rocks, it what? happened. What? What? I was caught by the Yeti. The who? You know, the abominable snowman, Bigfoot. You actually saw Bigfoot? <laughs> Heck yeah! He's a pretty cool dude. And he doesn't smell as bad as you might think, you know. Hi, hon. Where's Curtis? In the arms of Bigfoot. Didn't you tell me once that he's afraid of heights? <laughs> Ever since he was little. I took him on a Ferris wheel, and he was so scared, we have to have the man stop the thing and let us off. Well, Curtis must have had a remarkable recovery because he's just telling the kids about his trip to the top of Kilimanjaro. He's always had a vivid imagination. Picasso had a vivid imagination. Your brother's off the chart. I know he tells some stories that may not be true, but so does Stephen King. What's the difference? About $70 million. Norma, I'm just afraid that by not calling Curtis on some of these tales, we're encouraging him to live in his fantasy world forever. Now, if you want me to talk Arthur, to him... Arthur, he's my brother. If anyone talks to him, it'll be me. I know you're very protective of Curtis, but... Darn right I'm protective. He was only six years old when my mother passed. He's like a son to me. But with a son, you get a tax deduction. Uh, by the way, what is Curtis doing for a living these days? Last I heard, he was in, what, real estate? He quit that. He said it wasn't fulfilling. And what about his plan to start a company for earthquake detection? He changed his mind. Said it was too shaky. So what is he doing? A little of this and a little of that. He's trying to find his niche. Yeah? Did he try looking at an employment agency? Here, Dad. You done with your essay already? <laughs> done. I never started. I couldn't find an interesting way to begin talking about you. But Uncle Curtis, how am I going to keep it down to six pages? Coco, anyone? Mm. 
Norma! Norma! Shh, you'll wake Curtis. It is two in the afternoon. If he sleeps much longer, we'll have to wake him so he can go to bed. He had a long trip. All the way to Bob's Pizza. He's a growing boy. Norma, the man, is 36. The statute of limitations on boy expired about 20 years ago. Now, I have to make my lesson plan for the week, and the books I need are in the den. Oh, can't you just wait a while? Where's Uncle Curtis? Keeping the den sofa from flying away. Shh. He's sleeping, Angie. Well, when he wakes up, could you remind him to drive me and Carmel to the Fandy concert tonight? Did Uncle Curtis happen to mention what car he'd be driving? Well, he was talking about renting a stretch limo, but they were all sold out. So I guess we'll be taking your car. Thanks, Daddy. Norma, is that grown man in there ever going to grow up? Arthur, keep your voice down. I don't want to keep my voice down. Oh, I know. I'll go someplace where I don't have to keep my voice down. Now, if you need me, I'll be at the library. I see you remember, in my line of work, a man needs to stay fit. Um, Curtis, uh, what exactly is your line of work these days? You know, sis, I'm glad you asked. I think it's time to put my days of adventure behind me. Really? Yeah, I mean, I see the life you and already have, the kids, the house. I've decided to settle down and get into something respectable, something secure, something meaningful. Curtis, that's wonderful. Do you have any ideas? Yep. I'm going to be an actor. An actor? Gee, do you know how to act? Hey, I've got it in here. I really want to give it a shot. And if nothing happens in a couple of weeks, I'll move on. Um, uh, Curtis, about some of the stories you tell. Yeah, I get a little carried away, I know. I just do it to entertain the kids. I'll cut it out, I promise. Uncle Curtis, look, Molly brought over her new baby kitty. Her mother bought it for her. She's cute. What's her name? Boots. Oh, because she's got four little white paws. No, because she sleeps in my daddy's work boots. I wanted to call her Stinky. Whoa there, killer. You have your own food. You know, girls, female lions do all the hunting. You know about lions, too? Of course. I taught Siegfried and Roy everything they know. <laughs> Duh. Where's Boots? She was here a minute ago. Kitty. Where are you hiding? Boots! Kitty! Boots! Kitty! Wait! I hear her! Boots! Look! There she is! In the tree! It's Molly's baby kitty! It's stuck! Andy, you have to get it down! Bump that! Please! Andy, you have to save her! Come here, cat. Ah! Help! Angie, hold on and don't move a muscle. Is the kitty okay? Yes, and so am I. Thanks for asking. Sounds like you care more about that stupid cat than you do your own sister. Nuh uh. It's a tie. Hey, what's up? Oh. Hurry, Uncle Curtis! Get me down! And please get Boots, too! I don't want anything to happen to her! Don't worry, Molly. My Uncle Curtis will save them. He can climb anything. He's the bravest man I know. I'll hold the ladder for you. Oh, right. Good. <laughs> Curtis, are you all right?
Just let go. I've got it. Thanks, Dad. Don't forget the baby kitty. The what? <laughs> Uncle Curtis, how come if you climbed all those mountains, you froze on the fourth step of the ladder? Yeah, Curtis, why is that? Oh, that? Well, the thing is, I'll explain that on the way to the concert tonight. Um, that's okay. I think my dad wants to take me. Hey, whatever's clever. I can spend the time with our man here working on his paper. Our man's cool. I don't need it anymore. Hey, Dad, what was the name of your fraternity again? It's okay, Uncle Curtis. I get scared when I get up high, too. Scared? Is that what you think? I'm scared of heights? Shorty K, I'm the guy who climbed Kilimanjaro. I mean, I'm the guy who bungee jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. Curtis, don't you think you should tell the children what really happened on that ladder? Okay, guys, you see, the truth is, when I was out on that ladder, the reason I couldn't move was because... Because his knee locked up on him. What? His knee, his right knee. The one he hurt when he saved that boat... Uh, school bus from going over a cliff. That's right, Curtis was walking along a road. Uh, where was that road, Curtis? It was, uh, uh, uh the Rockies? Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. He was hiking outside of Denver, see? When all of a sudden, this school bus came barreling around a corner, totally out of control, and the bus was full of sixth graders. Actually, already they were in kindergarten. Uh, but you know, that's not important, so go ahead. As the bus got closer, Curtis could see that no one was driving. And where was the driver, Daddy? The driver, baby girl, had stopped the bus at the top of the hill to get himself a cup of hot chocolate. See, uh, he set the emergency brake, but it gave way. And now the bus was headed right toward a cliff. So your Uncle Curtis jumped on the hood, climbed over to the door, and kicked it in just in time. And that's how he hurt his knee. But even with that hurt knee, your uncle was still able to jump into the driver's seat and hit the brake just in time to keep the bus from plunging into a river below. Wow. Uncle Curtis, why didn't you ever tell us about that? Because, uh, b because I don't want the bus driver to lose his job. He had kids and everything. Wow. Yeah, wow. Angie, if you're going to the concert, you better get ready. It's getting late. Yeah. Uh, you know, Uncle Curtis, if you want to take me... I guess I can hang with that. My niece should be okay. <laughs> Why did you do that? Well, like you said, he's family. And as flaky as he is, when each of the kids was born, Curtis always arrived the next day to see you. And he never forgets their birthdays. Hmm. Oh, he does love the kids, and I guess he needs them to love him. They're the children he'll probably never have. Do you think they actually believe that story? I don't know. I think it was more that they wanted to believe it. Kind of like Santa Claus, you know? <gasps> Are you saying that there's no Santa Claus? Of course I'm not. Oh. That's good, because for the past 19 years, I've been kissing this very handsome man in a white beard and a red suit every Christmas Eve. Oh, oh, oh. Mom, Dad, you'll never guess what happened at the concert. Uncle Curtis got me backstage and I got to meet Fandy. Where do I tell everyone? You really do know Fandy? Oh, yeah, we go way back, you see. <sighs> no. I ran into an old buddy who works for her. He runs the light board. He brought Danny over to meet Angie. That was very nice of him. Well, that's not all. They short one roadie for the rest of the tour, and my boy got me the gig. I leave for Atlanta at 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. Curtis, that is great news. I couldn't have done it without you, sis. Or you, Artie. I mean, Arthur. So, who's the lucky one who gets to drive me to the band's hotel at 4 in the morning? Or you can take me now. <laughs> Deal. Night, Ange. Night, Daddy. Oh, did I tell you I got a postcard from Uncle Curtis today? You won't believe what happened. Yeah, probably right. When the tour was in Vegas, Sandy proposed to Uncle Curtis, and the Dalai Lama is performing the ceremony. Isn't that unbelievable? Uh, yeah. Unbelievable. Hey, son, what are you reading? My teacher's comment on my paper about Uncle Curtis. Fascinating. Remarkable. A true American treasure. Pretty good, huh? I got an A++. I sure am glad I have an uncle like that. Night, Dad. Dear Uncle Curtis, I miss you very much. I wish you could live here all the time. If I get a kitty, I'm gonna name him Curtis. 
because you're the best uncle ever. I can't believe it, Norma. All the kids talk about is Curtis this and Curtis that. It's, it's like he's everywhere I go. Uh, good night, sweetheart. Oh, it was, it was just... Uh, was it bad? You have no idea. 